Okay, so let's start at the very bottom register, the very lowest notes the bassoon can play. For all of these low fingerings, we're gonna have all of our front fingers down, all main seven fingers. So these three, plus the bottom hand and the low F key. And as I discussed earlier, uh, all of the really low notes have this pancake key down, anywhere below low E, which is uh, first ledger line below the bass clef, anywhere below low E has this pancake key down, okay? And uniquely, it also does the same thing as the whisper key does at the same time. It includes that operation for you, which allows your left thumb to leave that whisper key and start using the low, uh, low thumb keys all the way over here. So with all those front fingers down, Okay, this is a good idea to have a bassoon and actually do this fingering now. We've got all these down plus low E, and the lowest note on the bassoon is, is going to be low B flat. So I'm going to pivot my thumb. Rather than lifting it and bending it or pulling it back, I'm going to try to just rotate my thumb kind of straight from where its position is on the, on the whisper key all the way up to the lowest note, which actually feels almost like I'm pressing down two, these two keys which are next to each other. And that's low, low, B flat, so all the way at the bottom. So again, pivoting from the whisper key to low, B flat. Now the reason the pivot is important is because there are some times where we need to use the back of our thumb to press a key, or we need to do some other work and be able to get back to the whisper key with good agility and good uh, accuracy. So we're gonna make sure we don't bend a whole lot to reach back and press these other keys. Plus that's gonna mess with the operation of our fingers around the front if our thumb is traveling this direction. So we're trying to pivot using our, uh, where our thumb is attached to our hand. So again, with all the fingers down in the low E key, I'm gonna play B flat and B natural is right next to that. I let off the uh, right most key and just using the tip of my thumb, press the key next to that. That's gonna be a B natural. Kinda of hard to see. So we've got a B natural here. And then I'm gonna work my thumb the rest of the way around these thumb keys. C and D. And I can leave those other ones behind. So low B flat with my thumb here, B natural with my thumb here, C with my thumb here, and D, I'm gonna use the side of my thumb or the underside below my knuckle because that way my thumb doesn't have to move from its position near the whisper key. I can move up as much or as little as I need to, but instead of pulling my thumb back to press that paddle, I wanna keep it straight and just pivot it around here. Now the C key is, can be a particular challenge for people like me. My thumb doesn't bend much past straight. So actually keeping that straight thumb and pivoting to a place where I can press just the C key over here without accidentally hitting the B natural key, that's kind of a challenge. If you have a hitchhiker's thumb where your thumb hyperextends back a little bit, that can be a little bit easier. But there's an exercise for moving between the whisper key and the low C key in the back of the workbook. Okay, so with all those fingers down and the low E key, I have low B flat, B natural, C, D, and now notice we've skipped C sharp. So we're back from C to get the note in between C and D, we can use our low C sharp key here on the front, and that's our bottom pinky key. So down here, adding that key gives me a C sharp from down, down low. So with the thumb on the C, low C key, I can use my low C sharp up here to get that C sharp. Then the next note is D. That's using this thumb here. This long th key right here is the low D key. So with all the fingers and that key, I get D. If I want D sharp or E flat, then I use a pinky again to get that chromatic note. And that's the higher key over here. So here is my low E flat key. So it's the same fingering as low D using this long piece right here, but I add my low E flat key and raise it to an E flat. Finally, just where we started, all the fingers up front plus the pancake key, this low E key gives me low E.
That's E natural. So working our way back down, we have E natural with that thumb down. We have E flat with the D and the front E flat key here. We have D by leaving this down and lifting the E flat key. That's low D. Then we move our thumb to the C key and press down the C sharp key to get low C sharp. From there, we lift that C sharp key and move to the B natural thumb key. And finally, the low B flat thumb key. You do have to press down both the B flat and the B natural key to get that note to sound. The B flat key will go down on its own, but it won't. The B key is the one that closes the other low keys for you. So that's the low register on the bassoon. Take a minute and practice those, or watch this video again if you didn't catch any of those notes. All right, let's try it together. Get your read on. Let's start on low B flat. You'll want to voice da instead of do or even do because we're so low da is going to help open our mouth inside and help decrease lip pressure for the appropriate air embouchure balance we might be out of tune with each other but that's okay all the fingers in the very very front plus our low e key for all of our low notes the pancake and now pivot the thumb over for low b flat <laughs> Left thumb goes a little to the left for low B natural. Pivots a little bit further for low C. Remember, all the other fingers are just staying down. Then we have C sharp, adding our low pinky key here. Then D, left pinky comes up, right hand, left, excuse me, left thumb travels down to the long D key. E flat, leaving that thumb down, adding our left pinky on the front. And then E natural, lifting up both the D key and the pinky key here. So that's your low register chromatic scale. Thank you.